You know, I would love to say, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, but I'm afraid I'd get sued for trademark infringement. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is May 3rd. It is Wednesday. Tomorrow, being Thursday, I got my live streaming event. Me and Lily Star, we do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When you hear that market bell going off, we're going on for about an hour. We talk to our viewers about stocks they're interested in. So if you got a ticker you want us to look at, bring it on in. We'll gladly go through the charts, the filings, the financials, whatever, and we'll give you our opinion, whatever that's worth. Four o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. So what do we do on this show? We look for hot OTC and penny stocks, meaning any stock under five bucks wherever it is at. And I've got some I want to share with you today. Of course I do. Now, this stock should look familiar to you. It should. If you've been watching my shows, we've covered this three times already in the last 30 days. On April 11th, April 26th, and May 1st. And she just keeps climbing. Now, we are not going to be talking about this company particularly, but it is at the core of the company we are going to be talking about. And it's all based around the same news. This news down here. This came out April 26th. Tingle Mobile signs exclusive agreement with Prime Commodity Exchange and All Farmers Association of Nigeria, securing considerable produce supply, nationwide warehousing facilities, and enhanced commodity trading opportunities. This really is a big deal. They made a deal with these two organizations, and they got 2,200 and some odd warehouses that go from end to end in Nigeria, and they're filled with agricultural produce. And they're going to kick this up to 80,000 warehouses in the next two years. And that's all part of this deal. One of the special things about it is that this company gets first dibs on all the agricultural produce brought into the warehouses, whether they want to use it to make their own food products or whether they want to sell it on the commodities exchange, which they own. So that's why it's been running. But there's another company that's also catching attention because of this deal. It is called Tingo Inc., ticker T-M-N-A. Now, let's get this straight so we're not confused. This is Tingo Inc., and this one is Tingo Group. Are they connected? Are they affiliated? Or are they separate companies? Yes. <laughs> well, it's true, both ways. Let me tell you the story of how this all goes. First off, I am going to refer to Tingo Group as Tio. This is the one we've been talking about, has been running for days. The other one I will call Tingo. So Tio is our company we've been trading. Tingo is the new one. Now, the first thing I need to set you straight on, Tingo Mobile, the one that made the deal in Nigeria, they are a subsidiary of Tio, but they used to be the subsidiary of Tingo. And we're going to get all the facts to what happened here at their most recent financial from Tingo. This came out December 2022. They tell us that on December 1st, 2022, we sold Tingo Mobile Limited, our sole operating subsidiary, to Tingo Group, T-I-O. In exchange, we got 25 million shares of TIO common stock and two series of preferred stock that are convertible to TIO common stock. If we convert all of our preferred stock, our shareholdings in TIO will be equal to 75% of all the outstanding shares of common stock. That is huge, folks. That means this company really owns TIO. TIO has 25% left over. This company, TMNA, Tingo, has 75% of TIO. Now, this Tingo Mobile, it was a big subsidiary. It is used for agri fintech to help farmers, but they were doing other things with it too, and I just want to briefly touch on to it. As of December 1st, 2022, the date of our sale of Tingo Mobile, we had approximately 9.3 million subscribers using our mobile phones and Nawasa payment platform. And although Tingo Mobile has a large retail subscriber base, 9.3 million, it is essentially a business-to-business-to-consumer business model. 
Each of Tingo Mobile subscribers is a member of one of two large farmers cooperatives with whom it has contract relationships with. And it is through those relationships that they distribute their branded smartphones to various rural communities of member farmers. And it is through the phone's proprietary applications that are embedded in them where Tingo is able to distribute their wide array of agri-fintech services and generate the diverse revenue streams as described. Now, this all came to be through what they call a multi-phase forward triangular <laughs> merger. It was originally M-I-C-T. When the deal was made, they changed the name, they changed the ticker. So that's what you got going on here. Tio has just made a huge deal and they've got a lot going on over there, but T-M-N-A has a larger interest in them than Tio has. So what was the relative volume around T-M-N-A today? Well, now that's surprising because the chart is hot, folks. I mean, really, I was drooling when I saw this chart. It is a perfect atypical breakout chart. That 200-day SMA is coming down like a ski slope, leveling off. Price is right up underneath it, breaking it, and the volume is stacked up behind it. But that doesn't tell the same tale, does it? We have 137,000 shares on an average for the last 30 days. Now, that's taking 30 days and averaging them together. It looks a lot more than that to me. But today, she fell down to 98,000 shares. Share structure for Tingo Inc. Wow. We got a high outstanding share count of $1.2 billion and... I'm not buying that float. I mean, it, if it is $215 million with a $1.2 billion outstanding share count, that's great. I wouldn't normally call $215 million a good float, but in this case, I would. What stands out to me here, though, is this. Authorized share count, 12.5. Here we have 12.2. They're almost broke. This is your bank. This is everything outside the bank. You can see they've only got... Uh, what, uh, 23, yeah, 23 million shares left. If they need money, they've got nothing to sell. So how do they make money? Well, they need to get a big investor or they got to get some shares in the bank. And how do they do that? A reverse split. They have to pull a lot of shares in, put them back in the bank, and then resell them. Hopefully, they don't have plans on doing that. And those financials, looking pretty good, actually. At the end of 2022, they had nearly a billion dollars, 989, and it has been increasing year after year. And goodness, look at that. The cost of their revenue really fell down to 30 million. I know that sounds like a lot, but look what they got to keep, 959 million dollars. I don't think we'll see anything new on the quarterly. Nope, just a breakdown there. And looking at their disclosures, well, we've got a DEF 14A here. I do believe that is for a meeting of some sort. Yes, that is for a shareholder meeting. And an 8K back here, just seeing, working with the management. Got some changes going on. And the funny thing is, is even though they have a large interest in TIO, you don't find any of their news over here. There is no recent news. The most recent news came out February of 2022. Why they don't post it here, I don't know. But I think people are figuring it out because the chart looks really good. Let me share that with you now. As we do in all of our shows, we're going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. Now, I do have up the six-month, four-hour chart for TMNA, but I also have it up for TIO. I want to give you a glance at that stock so you remember what was going on. She broke through back here on the very first day of March, and she started climbing. We looked at her April 11th, April 26th, and she just kept on climbing. Once she broke through that 200, she did not look back. Now that you got a view here, take a look at TMNA. It is just starting that same run. We have a high back here of $2.79 in October. And then just a couple days later, she fell to a penny. Yeah, it wasn't a normal drop, and it didn't stay there very long. She bounced right back up to her 200, but she has been falling all of this time, sitting around 30 cents for quite a while. But as you can see, right now that volume is getting very strong. She has gotten over a 50-day SMA. She's working away to that 200, and right now she is sitting on top of that 200. It looks like a perfect launch pad to me.
Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, a lot like the MACD, you read them the same. That is pushing up. Our MACD is pushing up. Our RSI is at 61. And this is my ADX, trend continuation. This tells me if my trend is changing just by changing the direction of the line. And there's a pattern we look for with our PPO and our ADX. When you see the PPO going up and you see the ADX going down and you have that spread going, 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 guaranteed 100%, no doubt about it, absolutely, positively, the price is going up. So this all looks good right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, she jumped on top of the 200 here and she's been working that. She is now gaining some altitude on it. She's graduated up to her 50-day SMA. Now it looks like she's pushed herself up onto the 20. The lighter the SMA they're bouncing off of, the easier it is for it to rise. Osculators. Everything is kind of cooling off right now. Our PPO is planed out. Our ADX has had some change of direction. Our MACD is at a crossover just gone under and is now going sideways and our RSI is climbing and is at 55 right now the bare minimum of where I like to see my RSI five minute five day well that looks good we got a low bubble here of 35 cents hit a high here of 45 cents came down not to the 200 to the 50 and she is riding that and you can see here she's saying bye 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 see ya she's waving to that 200 she doesn't want to come back she showed the direction she wanted to go and she's paying her last homage as she continues to climb our oscillators we got a crossover right there in our ppo she is ready to climb look at that big bounce to get back on top of that 50 our MACD did have a tumble. Boy, it came down hard underneath the signal line and is turned around right now and wanting to climb. RSI is cool. It's at 52. But I'm liking TMNA. She's got a lot of potential when people figure this out. I'm really not counting on a press release or anything to come out from TMNA. It's going to have to be investors who do their own due diligence or watch my video. <laughs> TMNA. Good surprises, folks. She is on the launch pad. Now we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about in a while. A SPAC warrant. SPAC warrants are penny stocks, so we're really not looking at BioPlus Acquisition Core. That is the SPAC. Now let me break this down real quick and brief for you. A SPAC is a blank check company that comes onto the major exchanges without any business, making no revenues. They only secure a ticker on the major exchange. Then they go looking to make a deal, normally with a private company that wants to go public. Once they make a deal and it's closed, that new company gets a pile of money from all the shares of stock that they were selling before they cut the deal. And every share of stock costs $10. Now, this is the weird part. The shares are worth $10 until a deal is closed. Not talking about it, not signing the letter of intent. You've actually got to close the deal. Then the stock is worth more than 10 bucks. So when hot news comes out, nobody really trades the stock. You might see it go up a few pennies like right now, but that's all it'll do. It really doesn't move. So where does all the action go? To the warrant. B-I-O-S-W, that is the warrant for BioPlus Acquisition Core. The W on the end makes it a warrant. Sometimes you'll see forward slash W-S. Now, as I said, the company's not making any money right now. There's no revenues. They just made a deal. They tell us here on May 2nd, 2023, BioPlus Acquisition Core entered into a business combination agreement with Avertex. Avertex will be a wholly owned subsidiary of BIOS. Now, Avertex excites me. They tell us here that Avertex is the maker of the first and only FDA approved implantable heart attack warning system. They are to be publicly traded via merger with BIOS Acquisition Corp. They've got this implantable device that warns you of an oncoming heart attack, even silent heart attacks. Like I said, this taps into the fear and the hope 
of people. This is a scary thing. We are already on alert for our health since COVID, but heart attacks isn't something you can prepare for. All the exercise in the world, all the right eating isn't going to stop a heart attack if they're going to happen. And they happen to people at young ages, old ages, and I think it could be very hot. I think it could spark something in the investors. Now, there's really not a whole lot more to look at. We're not going to look at the shares because you don't look at shares with warrants. And we could look at the relative volume. Let's see what that relative volume was today. All right, that jumped. We went from 39,000 to 71,000. Now, something you need to know about warrants. Warrants don't get the same sort of volume stocks do. But they get bigger jumps, faster moves. You can see a stock move hundreds of thousands of percent on less than a hundred thousand shares. That's what I love about warrants, folks. They can get some huge runs. And as I said, when news comes out, it's not the stock that moves, it's the penny stock warrant. Let's go take a look at that chart. Not a whole lot of trading going on, but then of course she's a warrant. <laughs> I forgot my toothpick. I've got a lot of oral fixations, but I can't do any oraling with you. All right, we got a six-month, four-hour view here for BIOSW. Our high hit at the end of January of 27 cents, bouncing from five and a half cents. That is a solid 500% gains. She ripped through the 200 going this way, and she ripped through it coming back down as well. She was going sideways with a little incline over this time, but today she's gotten over that 200-day SMA. Not a lot of volume to talk about, but she is a warrant. Our oscillators look good though. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator is going up. Our ADX is going down. Remember the pattern. If they're spreading, the price is climbing. Our MACD is in agreement. She's pushing up. She's crossed over and is crossing the signal line. And there's our accumulated green bars looking nice. And our RSI has gotten quiet and tempted right now at our basement where we want to be no lower 55. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. What a mess. There's our 50-day SMA. She was on top of it, rode underneath it, hitting the low, rode back up, hitting a high. Our high today was 12.12 .12 cents, and she fell down to 11 cents. Oscillators are still looking good. Crossover on the PPO right now. Crossover on the signal line with the MACD, and our RSI is warmed up to 57. Five day, five minute, not a lot here. And I didn't draw these lines. I know they're perfectly straight, but that's our 250, 20, and nine day. She's running up off of her low here of eight cents. Every single one of these, their lows are higher than the one before, hitting that high and pulling back to 11 cents. All of our oscillators are pushing up, looking like she still wants to grow. The chart looks good, folks. Everything looks nice. Looks like she wants to continue growing. But that's not what I like the most. I like this product, this device, this implantable warning of a heart attack coming on. I think it's going to be hot, just like cancer. People want things that are going to keep them alive for longer. Nobody wants to die, right? And I think that's why stocks that have these products and these uh, drugs that can keep us alive for longer run hard. Nobody wants to die. B-I-O-S-W. Watch the warrant on this company. It could excite us. What is up with these penny stocks on the NASDAQ? They are on fire. And I got another hot one for you. This is Vivani Medical, ticker V-A-N-I. She's got a beautiful chart. That's why I look at these stocks in the first place. And she's got a three-fold catalyst. I am really excited about this one. So Vivani finished the day at $1.45 with almost 6% gains. Did I miss telling you the uh, price and the gains on the last two stocks? I'm thinking I did. My bad. I got too excited. All right, we are looking at the catalyst for Vivani. This is news that came out, and it is big news, but they're leaving words out that we're used to reading, but I know what they're saying. Vivani Medical is an innovative clinical stage biopharmaceutical company that develops novel long-term therapeutic implants. Today, they announced the filing of the registration S1 form with the SEC for the proposed IPO of Cortigent Inc. Cortigent currently is a wholly owned subsidiary of Vivani. 
Folks, what they're saying here is it's a spin out. This is their subsidiary being IPO'd out onto the open market. That is a spin out, which means we're going to get dividends when it happens. Now, this company they're spinning out really excites me. Their technology is mind boggling. Read this with me and see if you see it the same way I do. Cortigent was formed to continue the business of Second Sight Medical Products, a pioneer in developing targeted neurostimulation systems to help patients recover critical body functions. The company's technology combines neuroscience understanding with proprietary microelectronics, software, and data processing capabilities to provide artificial vision and potentially restore muscle movement in victims of a stroke. Are they talking so that blind people can see virtual vision? An early feasibility clinical trial has been substantially completed to evaluate an advanced system for artificial vision called Orion. This device has already received FDA breakthrough device designation. So they're not just talking hypothetical. This is already out there. I'm going to have to do some more due diligence. I didn't know we had anything for blind people. And that's what it sounds like, right? But they say it's going to be able to do more. Cortigen is also exploring the application of its core technology to accelerate the recovery of arm and hand function in patients who are partially paralyzed due to a stroke and plans to explore additional applications of its platforms in the future. So it is big news. I mean, I have never heard of anything like this before. But just because I think it's big doesn't mean anything. What about the investors? Do they think it's big? Well, I can point out one investor who does. You see this Form 4 that came out uh, two days ago? This is the form that insiders must file whenever they buy or sell common shares of the company's stock. I'm going to check out what happened on the 27th and the 28th. Mr. Greg Williams, who is a director in the company, he owns at least 10% of the company, made a purchase. Whenever you see it in green, he's made a purchase. Right there are the dates. It is April 27th and April 28th. There are the amounts. There are over 2 million shares at just over a dollar a share. In two days, he purchased $2 million worth of shares in this company. Now, that other form right there, this is also about him. Greg Williams, he owns 23 million shares. He just bought $2 million more million worth. That gives him 38.9% of the company. Now, he just did this purchase a week ago on just in front of this news, the spin out of this device that has got FDA fast track designation. Do you think he knows something that he can't share with us because it would be insider information? I'm excited. A $2 million investment with that sort of news, something's about ready to happen. So what was the relative volume around this company today? A nice jump, but not huge, right? We've gone from 41,000 to 177,000, 400% increase. Looking at the share structure for the company, it's not going to be bad. We've only got an outstanding share count of 50 million, so it's going to be less than that. Financials for the company. We don't have anything for 2021 or 2022. We got anything yet? We got no money coming in at all. And this guy just invested $2 million into a company that has no revenues. I think he knows something. Disclosures, we've already looked at them. We've been all over them. They are hot. What else is hot? The chart. Let's go take a look at that. Oh, that's a sweet chart. This is Vani, ticker V-A-N-I, six-month, four-hour view. And that there is the atypical breakout chart. We've got our high bubble six months ago, $4.45. A huge fall all this time till she hit that low of $0.75 mid-March. Off of that, she has bounced up over that 50-day, has been fighting to get through that 200 Finally got through it a few days ago, got herself some good footing here, and jumped from $1.10 up to $1.65. Fell back only to the nine-day SMA. Did not even come through it, and she is floating on that right now. 
The volume has had some strong bounds. There hasn't been a lot of volume here, so that's something to take note of. And our oscillators, all of them are on fire. Every single one of them is going to the moon. You can't lose if all your oscillators are pointing up. 20-day, one-hour view. So, bouncing off that low bubble, she crossed her 200 on the hourly chart, skidded across that for a few days, pushed herself up onto the 50-day, only two days later, put herself on the 20, then graduated to the 9. The price is getting lighter and lighter. It wants to float high. Our oscillators, all of them look good. All of them are pushing up. We do have a little taming on our MACD right now, but it's still above the line. And our RSI is at 60 right now. We had a little bit of pullback after market hours, but it hasn't put us in any danger zone. We're still on top of the nine. Five day, five minute. Nice. Low bubble in this corner. Dollar two. She pushed up off of that 200. All the SMAs were tied in a knot right here. She quickly found her place. She bounced off of the 50. She's working that 50 real hard. Ooh, she's come back to the 200 here, and now she's gone back to her 50. Looks like she's getting light again. Aftermarket activity has pulled it back down to the 50-day SMA, and she's bouncing and let's see where that sits. She is right at the 20-day SMA right now, which is a good place to be. Our oscillators, because of the aftermarket, does show that she's coming down right now, but I'm not too worried about that. I think Vani's got a lot going. You've really got three catalysts. You've got the spin-out, which is going to be a dividend. They didn't give us a date about it, but they filed the S1, so that's got to be close. Two, the devices, their implants, Virtual vision and helping paralyzed people be able to move, that's gigantic. And then you've got an insider, a director, who owns 40% of the business, 27 million shares, and he just bought another 2 million shares a week ago. You don't invest that much money just any old time. You do it in a timely fashion. I think, he thinks, the stock is going to go up soon. And I think the same thing. There is no doubt that these stocks are hot briquettes. They are glowing red and smoking. The charts are heated up and ready to explode. TMNA, that's that Nigerian deal. We've been looking at it from the TO point of view, which was great. She's been running for a while now. But now we've discovered that TMNA holds 75% of TO. They're the real winners, and that chart is set up. Then we've got another hot stock with a hot product. We are looking at the warrant, B-I-O-S-W. We don't have to worry about the stock because it's not moving, and the warrant is a penny stock. And the company that they're doing this merger with has an implantable device that warns of oncoming heart attacks. I think it's big because nobody wants to die. They'll invest in that. And that last one, Vani, V-A-N-I. Virtual Vision, VV from Vani, VVV, Virtual Vision from Vani sounds exciting. I didn't know we had anything like that. I didn't even know we were even close to anything like that. Now, maybe I'm not understanding it properly. I'm going to have to do some more due diligence, as I'm expecting you to do. These are hot stocks, but I didn't share everything with you. So please, follow behind me with your own due diligence. It isn't going to hurt. I guarantee it. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.